let's learn the connection between row equivalence and the inverse of the matrix this is like additional property to know more about row equivalence we will talk about how this is important and how can we use it in the previous video we talk about that and we can see here we transform a into c by reduced row echelon form 2 to know if they are row equivalent or not and here of course we can say a here is row equivalent to this matrix this matrix they called it identity matrix they called it like this identity matrix i2 this 2 by 2 matrix so here we have a row equivalent to identity matrix since this a is row equivalent to identity matrix then we can say a has inverse so this is very important to know if the matrix has inverse or not has inverse you can see i wrote it a is row equivalent to identity matrix here identity i it's mean identity matrix if and only if this if and only if a is invertible or we can say non-singular this sentence you can write it like a has inverse Or you can say, instead of this, also you can say A inverse exists. So it's very important to know. So if, if we have, if A is row equivalent to identity matrix, then, here if, then A is invertible non-singular. And the opposite the same thing here let's write here if a is in vertible or non-singular of course then you can say i write it in the opposite way i have to write it in this way but you can know here you can understand what i want to say so if a is invertible then a is row equivalent to identity matrix so this is very important to know if the matrix has inverse or not has inverse so as we can see this is really beneficial for us to know about row equivalent to understand more about the inverse of the matrix that's it see you in the next video